By pure quantitative political measures, it has been a rough couple of weeks for the McCain campaign. On September 14th, the day before Lehman Brothers went bankrupt, Senator McCain led Barack Obama by two points in Gallup's daily national tracking poll. Today, Senator McCain trails in that same poll by seven points. That is a nine-point switcheroo. Along with the trouble on Wall Street and other really scary money meltdown prospects, the McCain camp's political slide tracks almost exactly our time on the air here at this show. As a result, since this show started, we have been talking a lot about what's going wrong with the McCain campaign and what they, or he the candidate, could do about it. But we have yet to have the benefit of hearing directly from anyone in the McCain campaign uh, to, to share with us their view of the state of the race. That all changes tonight, and I could not be happier about it. In a bit of Maddo Show breaking news, I'm very pleased to welcome to the show from the McCain campaign, Senior Policy Advisor Nancy Fotenhauer. Before joining the campaign, she was president of the Independent Women's Forum. Ms. Fotenhauer, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm delighted to be here, Rachel. Your campaign this week unexpectedly pulled out of Michigan, a state uh -huh. in which you have spent millions on TV ads, in which the senator has spent a lot of time campaigning. Mm -hmm. Is this a minor adjustment, or does this reflect a big strategic change? Well, you know, Rachel, that's not my area of expertise, but the, the folks who do this for a living tell me that this is a normal process, normal act for this stage in the process where you're running up against the clock and you just have to make really good decisions about where, where you allocate your resources. And frankly, the Obama campaign has, has also pulled out of states, and you just have to get very, very serious about your path to the electoral map, you know, your electoral vote count. And so I, I think that uh, by listening to the experts that we can get to 260 votes pretty, pretty well. And the question is, how do you get from 260 to 270? So I'm sure the Obama campaign has done and will do similar adjustments, but this was one that we just needed to do at this time. Do Governor Palin and Senator McCain disagree about Michigan? I was surprised that she, I know. she told Fox she'd like to keep campaigning there. Uh, she's, she's got a lot of, she's very feisty. She does it. She's obviously a great competitor. Editor. I think you could tell last night, um, I was watching her, and I could tell why she was such a great athlete, because I'll tell you what, she relaxed and smiled into the fight. She just, she really relaxed into the argument, and they're, they're, you know, that, that level of, of willingness to fight for every vote, I think, speaks very well for Governor Palin. But boy, she was ready to get on the plane and go there today, wasn't she? <laughs> you could safely say that she is being overruled. She's not going to be allowed to carry on in Michigan on her own, is she? That I haven't seen an official schedule change. All Let right. me put it that way. I hear you. <laughs> Now, the Washington Post today had a story about Senator McCain's chief of staff in the Senate, who apparently previously worked as a lobbyist for Freddie Mac, uh, coupled with your campaign manager, Rick Davis's past associations with Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. Is this going to end the McCain campaign's efforts to try to say that it's Barack Obama who has the worrying associations with those institutions? Uh, well, you know, Rachel, I, I think everybody has plenty of associations to point at, and it, point to, rather, and that's, that's part of, it's almost emblematic of the problem that, that occurred. I mean, F Freddie and Fannie were government-sponsored enterprises, as you know. They were basically given a leg up by the government and allowed to grow way out of control. I mean, I think the most important thing is that when this was flagged, when this became known back in 2005, Senator McCain was one of the original co-sponsors out there calling for a bank-style regulator. And what that meant is he said, forget about this Freddie and Fannie being able to ride the escalator up with no oversight. He wanted somebody, a regulator who would have the ability to come in and inspect the books, offer cease and desist orders, inspect their programs and report on progress, and, and have minimal capital requirements. This was basic good government. And this was happening, remember, at the time when there had just been a huge uh, light shown on the fact that they were manipulating the balance sheets in order to trigger incentive pay. You also had uh, Fed Chairman Greenspan at the time coming out saying if they were not reformed, they could eventually cause systemic financial risk, something we've been dealing with a lot in the last couple of weeks. So I think the most important thing is who did the right thing when you know the canary was singing in the coal mine, and that was John McCain. Well, and frankly, Barack Obama was just silent on the issue, Rachel. I mean, he didn't offer his own bill. He didn't co-sponsor. He just, as we've said, voted present. Well, the, the, the issue that you're talking about, the, Franny, the, the Fannie and Freddie uh, regulation bill, was put forward by uh, Chuck Hagel. Senator McCain didn't come on as a co-sponsor to that until a year after the bill had been filed. And it is the idea that he was sort of taking on these institutions, I think, and I think in a lot of people's eyes, is really undercut by the fact that the 
institution set up by Fannie and Freddie to lobby for them having less regulation was headed up by the campaign manager for your campaign I and know. his chief of staff in the Senate was lobbying for Freddie Mac up through 2004. It's it's hard to describe him as an anti Fannie Freddie crusader given given those things. You know, Rachel, be fair, be fair. You've got you sure. know you, you've got Franklin Range, you've got Jim Johnson, you've got and you've got an Obama campaign that will not release their can list I, of advisors. But can I talk to you about like, Franklin Rains for a second? It, Franklin Rains. Said that he okay. never advised the Obama campaign on housing issues ever. I'm, the Obama campaign has said the same thing. The quote that you guys have used for your ad on that subject is from the style section in the Washington Post, and it's denied by all the parties involved. I'm not sure that Franklin Rains is a great peg for you guys oh, to try to hang the Fannie Freddie Association well, on him. He he said it. It was reported. And he said it publicly and privately. Okay, so let's talk about Jim Johnson then, the vetter. But but to get to your substantive issue, because that's more my bailiwick. Uh, John John McCain actually went out there and sponsored a bill in 2003 calling for a regulatory body that would be housed at Treasury to come in and have oversight over Freddie and Fannie. He was really out there even ahead of 2005. So I, I don't think it's fair to, to try to portray that he wasn't active. He was active. And remember, this was taking place, it was ex-committee, if you will, meaning it was not even one of his principal committees. And plenty of people did the wrong thing on this or were silent, like Barack Obama. So I think if you if you use that lens, then you've got to be able to use it fairly and focus on his efforts. Senator McCain, although he's a, he's a strong proponent of the free market, he has never endorsed the concept of an unbridled market, whether it's pharmaceutical industry, the tobacco industry, sponsoring legislation to fight corporate uh, corruption, uh, instituting higher penalties for uh, that. Can I, I mean, it, it's, he's worked with you know Senator Levin on corporate compensation and making sure those things were avert, avert when stock options were being hidden from the shareholders. I mean, he's just had a career of doing what he thinks is the right thing, and he has never been af afraid to step in when he thinks government oversight is, is warranted. I do think, <laughs> just to be to be fair, and I do so appreciate you coming on the show and talking to us about this, Nancy. I think, to be fair, I think the problem that Senator McCain is going to have in making that case is the amount of tape there is of him proclaiming himself as a deregulator. Um, <laughs> and to, and that's and it, I think political fortunes have changed, um, and, and the interpretation of the record is going to look different depending on what side you look at it from. But that's going to be that's going to be the fight uh, he is fighting. Nancy Fotenauer, I am so grateful that you took the time to meet with us tonight. Thank you for doing so. Thanks, Rachel.